Ba, 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 ba. Hello, Internet people. David here, and this is day eight of my game development journey. I'm working on a little dungeon crawler game with peanut characters. If this is your first time seeing me talk about my game, make sure to check out day zero and the rest of the days leading up to this video. So it's been a while since I've recorded a video or gotten a chance to really work on this game since the last uh, vlog that I've uploaded. Uh, work's just been really busy and it's been really hard for me to find the energy or motivation to kind of work on this game. So I really haven't made as much progress as I was hoping I've made by this point. Um, but I think that's just part of the journey. I think that's normal. I think there will be periods where you get a lot done. And I think there'll be periods where you don't get a lot done. And I guess it's hard to not feel guilty that you haven't worked on your project that you wanted to as much as, you know, you, you know you probably could have. Either way, feels kind of sad. But with all that said, um, I didn't want this video to start off negative by any means. I've run into what I believe is a future problem that I'm hoping that you can help me solve. And I'll get to that later in this video. So without further ado, here's what I have been working on. I've been working on fleshing out my little peanut character and adding even more animations to them, as well as I added some shading to make them look just a little bit more 3D. So here's this kind of shading outline. I've also added a little arm, and I have a walk, look, idle, and a sword singing sword? sword sword swinging animation as well as a thumbs up animation so i'll just show you what those look like so here he is kind of walking here he is looking while he's also holding a sword and i don't know if i showcased the sword in the previous video i have to go back and watch day seven now to see if i actually had this designed as well so here he is holding a weapon and I guess this brings up another point is the sword is going to be its own, I don't know what you want to call it in Godot, node or object because um, it will be an inventory item that you'll be able to swap weapons out so this won't just be the only weapon you get to use in the game. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Do you just you have your arm as a separate sprite in the game and then so that's like in the foreground and then your peanut character or your character is in the background and the sword is sandwiched in the middle like I'm just not sure how that layer in works and then when you do attack obviously the peanut is going to do an animation but I also need the sword to swing in a certain way which also has its own animation I guess I'm getting a little tripped up on how all the animations are going to work and how you can have an inventory system and start swapping out weapons with different animations and how does that all kind of tie together and maybe this is more of an art design thing and not so much of a programming problem or maybe it's a bit of both. I've never quite gotten this far with animations before so this is a huge leap forward for me in terms of just actually designing a character and getting some animations going. Um, with that said, let me show the rest of the animations because I could probably ramble about that for the next five minutes. This is my look animation. I'm just going to turn off this weapon layer. You know, here's a little idle animation. <laughs> and here, let's bring the sword back in for the sword animation. So I kind of have the sword swinging. Um, it kind of goes up in front of the face, kind of like a heavy attack maybe. Maybe if I do, maybe I'll have different attacks for the swords or any sort of weapons that involve swinging in this game. And I've animated a little bit of a white trail so it looks like there's some motion. And I don't know if I'm going to animate like visual effects type stuff because um, I want elements of like fire and goop and maybe chocolate because there's nuts and all kinds of just fun different elemental attacks that might be different from some other dungeon crawlers or rpgs that people have played before um 
because this is, really is going to be a nutty game and there's all kinds of nutty elements we could add in. This is making me think of pistachios for some reason. Anyhow, here's the next animation. Thumbs up. So that's what I've been working on. And I've also been working on getting my partner using a sprite some more and designing some different sprites that can be used in the game. And she was working on a lantern the other day. It's a really cute lantern. Um, I showed her how to animate an ace sprite as well. Um, and she designed this really, really cute lantern with like a blue flame inside of it and uh, little eyes that fly around. So I'll show you that. So actually, you know what? I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to bring her in to talk about that part because it's her work. And I think um, you guys probably want to hear from that artist and not me. Okay, let me go get her. Sometimes you just already know what you're going to talk about, so I don't have a yeah. script or anything. I just that's what I lo that's what I would love how you do videos. You don't have a script. You just, yeah. you just talk about what you're doing. Just talk about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Here's the update. Please help me. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. we're recording right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we'll throw this in the video. Oh. Okay. Oh wow, you can see my roots. <laughs> Bye, oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's okay. I think my boobies are bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll cut that out. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut that out. We're gonna cut that out. Keep rolling. We're gonna cut that out. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, um, want to sit down and talk about maybe what you did, and then uh, I'll change the scene for you, so you can showcase the lantern you're working on. Sure. And I kind of already explained that you're making a lantern. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And um, you'll be making some other stuff in the game as well. Yeah. So whatever else we can think of. We'll draw it and put it in and see how okay. it looks. Okay. Okay. Quick side note, so this won't be in the video. Like, how do you want to do this? Like, I, I was thinking I was going to pop Oh, no, this is all in the video. I'm not cutting any of this. No, you're going to cut this part. No. No. <laughs> no, we're just done. This is behind the scenes. Okay. <laughs> this is behind the scenes of how this game's being made. Okay. <laughs> this is the type of quality people can expect in the game, Okay. Okay. Okay, go ahead and sit. Oh, you want, I thought, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, unless you just want to stand here. We could just stand here. Okay, how do I do this? I don't know, let me see if I can get the blinds closed a little bit for you. I feel like I'm blinding. How are you looking? So, tell us what you were working on. Okay, so. Maybe, maybe you can introduce yourself if you want. I'm Meridia. Can, also, you Shauna. Use, you can, yeah, you can use your. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm Shauna. I'm helping, I'm David's wife, and I'm helping him make the game. So I'm I don't really know much about game development. Like I see what he does and I try and help where I can. So I do some art in real life and now I'm just trying to experiment with pixel art, which is a lot harder than I thought. It's actually pretty hard to use a very limited number of pixels and create something that looks like what you're trying to make it. Can they see my like can they see the screen? They can't see that screen yet. So here, go ahead over here on this recording software. Um over here. And find the one, scroll up on there, go to live scene. Yep. There you go. Now you're in the bottom left hand corner. Oh, and you can see my mouse move. Okay. Yeah, and you can see the mouse move. So this is the lantern that she made. Yeah, so this is what we tried to make. I mean, I kind of started it and what then... What did you try to make? You made it. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, the, this is the lantern we made. I have to like look around the mic. Yeah, I, I forget how these things work. Even after a few days, I already kind of forget visually how this works. But we're trying to make a blue lantern. Um, and the inside part, so the flame is going to be a creature that attacks you. So we're going to somehow make this separate from it and its own kind of creature. Um, but yeah, so we did this. Actually, yeah. you kind of need to remind me how this part Yeah, you works. know what? We have two animations there, one that's shorter and one that's longer. So go ahead and click on the 12. Click on the 12. You see how it's one? Yeah, click on 12. Yeah. That's kind of the end of it. And then hit play. And there it is. There we go. Okay. So that's the full animation for our blue lantern. So we're trying to make it so that the eyes are going in a circle and it's supposed to look like a flame is going up and down and like rising and falling. 
we're going to try to add a glass layer over top just to make it look a little more like glass and not just a blue blob right yeah add some sort of uh add some sort of shade into it like some sort of glass maybe not the yeah. whole thing will be glass but make it look like it's glass um because i think what we want to do is hide the eyes and the section that um here i'll go ahead and hide the eyes mm -hmm. Oh, I can hide them. And Sorry. Uh, the glass. So what essentially I think we're going to try and do is have the flame, like this right here, leave the lantern and come and attack the character sometimes. So we'll actually make this an enemy potentially. And what I want to see is the blue flame and eyes leave, and then you just see kind of the glass. Mm -hmm. So you still see the lantern in place, but the flame with the eyes has left. Yeah, so we're going to try and make it so that the blue flame kind of leaves, but you still have the light glass layer over top. Yeah. Which we can do. I think you just make a different layer and... Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And then we'll figure out what it looks like in Godot um, when it comes out and attacks you. Yeah. Yeah, big challenge for me was just obviously learning S rate, kind of learning how to do pixel art, how to kind of form things. You know, all the different layers and functions. Um, but I think we're getting a good handle on it, and I think it's going okay. So this is our blue one. We're going to try and make a green one, a red one, so you have lots of different themed lanterns. We're hoping to do kind of an alien-themed level, and I thought a green one, like oh, a really glowy green, cool. would be really cool for that. Even, even like swamp, like a dark swampy level. Yeah, yeah, like a dark swampy level, but still kind of like a glowy green light. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, it's been super fun to play with this, though. It was really tough. We we played a lot with the played around a lot with the flames. Now you get tongue twisted when you're trying to talk. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to just, especially when you don't have anything planned. You're yeah. just like, here's what I'm doing. And, and I, I love I love doing these videos this way. It's it's fun. It is fun. It's kind of fun. I hope it's entertaining for whoever's watching. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not trying to sell you guys on anything. We're not trying to sell you anything. So all we're, all we're trying to do is document what we're doing. This is and just even us. documented making the video. So this is just it raw. Yeah, exactly. Side note, some things I make in real or other parts of life. I made this fun thing. I found this figurine at a thrift store and then put pipe cleaners coming out of his bum. So that's what I do. So I do, I try to do random art and I do some painting. So yeah, pixel art is kind of a fun thing for me. Yeah, it is. Sorry, it's I hope that's okay. I showed my creature. No, you can do whatever. <laughs> Why would it be okay? <laughs> We're in my art room, so this is where we do art and pixel art. And this is where my computer currently is while our basement is under, re under renovation. Yes. So I work in here. I work. I have a job where I work from home. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say is like with my job, I do lots of presentations and talking, but I'm so not used to this format. But it's fun. It's a different format. Yeah. So yeah, th this is our, again, we tried to play around with the flame a lot. It was really hard to get the shape. We had it quite angled here and then it just wasn't quite fitting. So yeah, I think we did a good job kind of making it look like a, a rise and fall. There's kind of a slow-mo. And then I forget what frame it was, but we had the eyes kind of go in a circle and then they would blink open to fully white, which I, I liked, but I think this works better because it kind of looks like the eyes are opening and closing. Yeah, I think so too. It's just it's a nice animation. It's fun to look at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we did a good job on the layers. And that's the oh. layer 13. This was kind of the start <laughs> of maybe a red one. And originally we were going to start with a red flame, um, but we, we shifted to blue. And yeah, sorry, I'm taking this away from you. you no, that's okay. That's okay. I, I'd yeah. rather you jump in too and, and yeah. fill in the gaps because I don't, I don't even know where to start. It's hard to ramble and not know what you're talking about. I love rambling and not knowing what I'm <laughs> talking about. I do it all the time. But yeah, so we started with a red and then kind of somehow went over to blue. But blue is my favorite color. So I was happy to start with blue. Um, yeah, so the next thing I want to do, I think I want to work on the green one and then the red one and work on that glass layer and kind of that separate fire piece. But the lantern still stays there without it. Um, and um, yeah, if you got anything else to talk, I'm going to show them now what it looks like in the game. Because we've gone ahead and added the lantern in the game. Yeah. So I'll show them what that looks like. Yes. Okay, flipping over to the game now. <laughs> Creeping out underneath the bottom. Um, so here it is added in the game. And what I've done is I've brought in 
let's see what I've done here. I've separated the animation, so I made a sprite sheet that separated all the layers, so the eyes, the body, and the glass slash flame as their own kind of sprite. So here is just the lantern body. Here is the lantern eyes. And I wanted to keep it separate because if I'm pulling out the fire and the eyes, I want that separate, but as well as I want the eyes to track where the player is. So I want to be able to flip on the horizontal axis. Um, and actually, oh, you know what? Clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. So I want the eyes to be able to track the player going back and forth. And here is the fire. So all together, if I go into the main scene, um, here is our lantern, and I guess I forgot to mention I also attached some lights to it so that it's got some light coming from it. I think that, like the glowing light from it with the teal makes it look so ambient. It looks, yeah, it adds some nice ambience to the game. Like, look at this. Here's, here's what we got so far, and I think it's looking really good. You know, just for a, for a lantern effect, I think it adds just enough light to the scene. Um, and I think when the creature or the fire or whatever you want to call it leaves the lantern, I'm going to keep the light following it. So it'll have, you know, you'll see it maybe in the dark. So maybe there'll be some dungeons that are darker than other ones. And this lantern will just come creeping out at you. Um, and when maybe it attacks you, maybe it will just blow up. Maybe it'll be like a one hit type creature, um, enemy. I don't know what you want to call it that when it blows up, it will have blue fire. And I don't know if we're going to hand draw the blue fire as an animation or use some sort of 3D visual effects. But yeah, that is our first lantern and potentially our first enemy in the game. Um, going forward, I have to... Yeah, I'm just going to go over here. Nope, okay. Going forward, I have to figure out how I'm going to have my character animate. I'm still trying to figure out those layers of how do I add weapons and swap weapons out um, like an inventory type system um, as well as I just want to get some combat going so I think that involves like a state machine that allows you based off uh, key inputs what animation you're going to play and for how long and whether or not that animation can be interrupted. Um, as well as when I attack, I think I need to draw like a hitbox at the end of my weapon being like here's a range um, That you should be able to hit things because this is a 3d world. It's not 2d So I need to think I think I need like a hitbox cube and If any enemies are in that hitbox cube, then they get hit I think I, I think I have that logic down pat there let me know if that made no sense to you whatsoever sorry i wanted to go back to the game and just run around because it's been about two days since i've had the chance to actually run around so this is kind of fun for me um there was some issues before where i couldn't quite figure out how to get behind or get in front of this uh object um get in front of this lantern i should say uh, without like the eyes appearing in front of my character and I think that had something to do with like z-axis or rendering So maybe I'll talk about that because it, it just kind of jogged my memory that I ran into some sort of rendering bug Where these eyeballs were appearing kind of where my peanuts crotch was which was kind of funny and There was a set in here and I wish I kind of remembered what it was. I think it had something to do with alpha cut Alpha cut disabled. This mode performs standard alpha blending. It can display translucent areas, but transparency sorting issues may be visible when multiple transparent materials are overlapping. So I think I ran into an issue here where because I have three sprites that are all on the same plane, even here you can kind of see it translucent and overlapping. I think I had issues where the eyes were, were rendering ahead of my peanut or was rendering behind these things. And I believe I solved that by just turning off that, where was I? The alpha cut. 
I think turning off alpha cut solved that problem for me. And I don't think you need it disabled. There probably is like an alpha cut discard or something like that. I haven't played with these settings too much, but disabling this did help solve that bug that I ran into. So if you're somebody that's also layering multiple, I don't know, 2D sprites in a 3D world and you run into some sort of ordering issue, take a look at alpha cut. That might be where you're running into issues. So that's where the game is right now. We have our first kind of object in our dungeon floor. And I've been thinking a lot about adding, well, a lot of things. A lot of things. The list keeps growing and growing of things I don't know what to do. So a lot of research before I kind of probably make the next video or make any significant progress. Um, Shauna's going to be working on red and green lanterns and different lanterns that will fit in different scenes and environments. Um, cause I really want each dungeon to have its own unique look and feel, um, and potentially theme. Um, but one thing that I was really, really looking into is walls. I want to have walls and rooms in this dungeon. Um, I don't think I'm going to move the camera around or rotate it around walls or corners. Um, so when my character goes through a doorway to enter a room, what do I do with the walls that are now blocking my character's visibility? And I was trying to figure out what the logic might be where when I'm behind a wall, how do I tell I'm behind a wall and make that wall go invisible? Or do I make it so that when the camera gets close to a wall of a certain distance, that wall starts to fade, eight, uh, fade out or just disappears completely? Or do I make it so that when I enter a room, the floor might be different or I add some sort of bounding box where once my character steps into that box, certain walls on the edge of that box disappear. Um, and something I program, maybe the wall has a flag that I can set on it that makes it go invisible. Um, so I don't exactly know how to solve that problem or what might be the best way or the most efficient way or whatever you know <clears throat> or what might impact performance more than others I don't know if performance issues will be a something that I run into with this game but I still think there's probably a good idea of optimizing for something so if somebody knows a good way of making walls fade in and out or go invisible as your character enters a room or the camera has to pass through a wall let me know because these walls aren't going to be 3d objects they will also be hand-drawn 2d objects and that's my doggy barking um let me know let me know in the comments if there's some resources you can send my way if you want to help this um if you want to help develop this game with me and shauna join the discord um, we can give you some uh, sprites as reference. I can give you my peanut if you want to draw specific peanuts, an alien peanut, a slug peanut. I want to make a lot of the creatures look very much like the peanut character. Um, kind of similar to how our lantern shares the same eyes as our peanut. So if you want to help out, join the Discord link below. And as always, I'm David. This is the end of the video. Love and peace. Peace and love. See you guys next time.